G'day, I'm Dr Mike. When I'm not hanging out with Jake and Olivia at All About Animals, I'm working at Vet Products Direct. It's an online shop with thousands of discounted pet care products, and you can talk to vets and vet nurses who care about your pet as much as you do. Use promotion code ANIMALS to receive 5% off your order, plus free postage anywhere in Australia. I'll see you at vetproductsdirect.com.au, and enjoy the show. This program is proudly brought to you by Vet Products Direct, Holistic Select and the Walmart Company. Welcome to another great episode of All About Animals. I'm Olivia. And I'm Jake. On today's show, I chat to a very large but lovable seal who shows off some cool tricks. Then I talk to the Red Dog Trainer about all the work they did for the movie. After the show, make sure you go to our Facebook and Twitter pages for cool updates. We've got an action-packed show, so sit back and enjoy watching All, all About, about animals. animals. When we went to SeaWorld on the Gold Coast, I met Dean, who's a marine mammal trainer. What a cool job that would be. He introduced me to one of his performing seals. He was a bit unsure of me at first, but once he got used to me, I was allowed to pat him. Oh, you're so silky. He liked me so much that he gave me a kiss. Ah. So Dean, who's this? Uh, this is Florida. Florida is a 14-year-old male Californian sea lion. He's yep. one of the major stars of our show here at SeaWorld. What are some of their main threats? Um, out in the wild, um, natural threats include predation from animals such as great white sharks or killer whales. But their biggest problem facing them is, is pollution and yep. overfishing. So what is the difference between a leopard seal and Florida? Uh, leopard seals belong to a family of seals called true seals, whereas Florida belongs to a family of seals called eared seals. So if you have a look on the side of his face, yep. he's got these little tiny earlobes. True seals, like leopard seals, they don't have them. They also use their flippers differently. So Florida's got great big front flippers. This one. <laughs> yeah, that one. Um, which they use for swimming. Uh, yep. Leopard seals use their rear flippers for, sli uh, for swimming. What's, the, what's his main diet? Um, fish. Florida fish? loves nothing more than fish. At the moment he eats around uh, 15 kilograms of fish every single day, which helps keep him up to that nice healthy 300 kilo uh, weight limit that he's at. So what kind of tricks can he do? Um, well, he does lots of different behaviours. He's one of the major stars of our show. Um, most of the behaviours we train the seals are to help us look after them. Um, so, for instance, we can ask Florida to open up his mouth so I can get a good look inside at all of those teeth. Occasionally, seals get things caught in their teeth, like fish spines. So he's trained to allow me to inspect every tooth and make sure that there's nothing wrong with them. OK. However, show behaviours, he knows quite a few. Um, he is a little bit of a cheeky seal, aren't you, Florida? OK, good boy. <laughs> That was his beautiful tongue coat. Yeah. He also has a beautiful, handsome smile. Are you ready, Florida? You want to show off your smile for everybody? <laughs> now, if you have a look on the side of his face, he's got these lovely long whiskers. Yeah. Now, those whiskers help seals find food in murky water. Now, they're really sensitive, and the best way I can demonstrate just how sensitive they are is by asking Florida to balance a ball on his nose. Now, those whiskers are going to wrap up around that ball and touch it. Now they're not strong enough to hold the ball in place. All they do is feel which way it's about to move and then Florida can adjust his very flexible neck and spine to accommodate that. So how long does it take for him to learn all these tricks? Um, each behaviour is different just because each animal is different. So something like a wave hello, uh, like this, <laughs> it's relatively easy to train. It could probably take a couple of weeks. Whereas yep. something like a double backflip could take a little bit longer just because there's a lot more involved in that behaviour. The seals have to build up strength and coordination just like we have to. Three weeks to learn some behaviours? They must be pretty smart. 350 kilos doing a moonwalk? Now that's impressive. So Florida is one of our biggest animals. Do you want to show off how big you are? <laughs> nice work. He's just under three metres in length. Yeah. And uh, weighs just over 300 kilos. 
Now that's his nice healthy summer weight. Come winter, can weigh up to around 380, 390 kilos. Um, and the reason they change their weight throughout winter is the water's a lot colder. So they put on a big extra fat store, yep. keeps them nice and warm. Okay, and I've seen him dart across the pool. How fast can he swim? Um, they can get up to around 20 kilometres an hour. It's these great big front flippers that they have, which helps propel them through the water. A big sweeping motion. Inside of these flippers, they have the same bone structure as our hands and wrists. So he's got five little bone fingers, yep. knuckles and joints as well. Okay. Well, thanks, Dean, for your time. No worries, buddy. I'm glad to have you here. Do you want to say thanks, Floors? <laughs> You did good today, didn't you, Flores? <laughs> Hoof boots are a better option than using metal shoes on your horse. Today I got to speak with Pauline Williams from horsefx.com.au to find out all about them. So these are the boots, Olivia. Okay. Now the Cavello Simple Boots are light and strong. We'll try them on Kai and see how he goes with them, shall we? Oh, okay. It's easy. Simply measure from where the heel lands to the toe for the length and then the width at the widest part. Oh, and always clean out your horse's hooves before fitting your boots. They're simple to fit. Just undo the Velcro and open them out. Pull the boot tongue forward, slip the boot on the horse's hoof then checking the boot is centred on the hoof. Place the hoof on the ground, push the tongue against the hoof and pull the flaps tightly around ensuring they're level at the top and bottom. Simply fasten the velcro straps through the D-rings and press to secure them. Now it's your turn Olivia. Kai doesn't seem to mind them at all and it's definitely easier to keep his feet clean. The boots also come in brown and pink, Olivia, and you can get them and other accessories from horsefx.com.au. See, he likes them. Now you're ready to go for a ride. Cool! Now I can take Kai on trail rides without worrying about injuries to his feet. Now for something really different. We're in Adelaide at the Royal Show, and we're going to watch some of the Junior Pet Paraders. Children from any age can enter. Now these pigs aren't going to be doing many tricks. But what the judges are looking for is that they keep the pig moving, they have control of the pig, and that they have a good time doing it. Of course the pig has to be well looked after and in great condition. It was definitely very interesting to watch. The judge pulls them out and one at a time they walk their pig around the ring so they can assess them all. The pigs look quite happy strutting their stuff and it certainly pulled quite a crowd. After everyone had a go, the judges decided who the winner was. And this year's winner was Eliza. Let's chat to her and see what she thought of the day. So Eliza, it must be so exciting winning all these awards. Yeah. And how old are you? I'm seven. You're seven years old? Wow. And is it really exciting looking after all the pigs? Yes. Oh, that's awesome. Keep up the good work. So today, Dr. Mike, we want to know about how to toilet train your pet. Really, really important topic, especially for a little one like Tiger here. Yeah. yeah. So how would you toilet train your pet? It can be something really, really confusing and frustrating for pet owners. And it sometimes feels like nothing's going right. It can be complex, but we can just break it down into a couple of simple steps. Here's some tips. First of all, you've got to keep the litter tray clean. Change it every day if you can, as cats don't like dirty trays. Okay. Oh, okay. Second is they like to scratch in the tray and cover what they've done with clean litter. Mm -hmm. So once the litter is wet or dirty, they won't go in it again. So where should we put the litter tray? You know, just like us, pets like a little bit of privacy when they're going to the toilet. <laughs> so think about putting the litter tray somewhere dark, somewhere quiet and somewhere out of the way. They'd like to go to the toilet in private. Also think about putting it in a separate place to where you feed them. Makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. They want their food and their toilet area completely separate. So what should I do if my cat has an accident? If your pet doesn't go to the toilet in the right place, the most <laughs> important thing to do is to stay calm. There's no point in getting upset. Like, they really don't know that they've done the wrong thing. So yeah. a little bit of patience is really important. One of the important things to do is to, be, is to clean up properly. Yeah. So you shouldn't use normal household cleaners or bleachers or that sort of thing. 
those things will actually encourage the pet to go back to that same spot and go to the toilet. So you really okay. probably need a specific product. Products like Urine Free are excellent because they both mask the smell of urine, but they also, they've got a stain remover in them. So they're doing two things at once. Wow. Okay. Basically what they're doing is they're saying to the pet, this is not a toilet place. It's taking away the odor that would otherwise be in that place. Plus it's cleaning the floor at the same time. And if you're having problems with animal odors outside your house, another product you could try is Backyard Fresh. Okay. It's something you can really safely use outside and it'll help to take care of animal odors. So it just won't be so much on the nose. Oh, yeah. fantastic. <laughs> so why would my cat stop using its litter tray? There can be a number of reasons that that might be going on. The first thing to eliminate is to make sure it actually isn't a health problem. Talk to your local vet and they'll probably do some tests. Make sure there isn't a bladder infection or something like that. But there can be other reasons as well. It could be a behavioural issue. Cats are so sensitive, so changes in the household can really upset them and for whatever reason, that can change the way they go to the toilet. So <laughs> even adding a new pet, a new baby in the household or lots of different things like that can just put them off their game. So they're quite territorial then? They are really territorial. They're much more sensitive than we are to changes yeah. in their environment. But probably the third thing to wonder, wonder about is just what's going on actually in the litter tray. Keeping it clean, scooping it daily, making sure there's plenty of litter available, that'll give them the best chance of feeling comfortable about using it. Okay. All right, awesome. So Dr Mike, what are the litter box discs? Really, really handy product. With the litter tray, it's all about odour control. Yeah, they can make some mistakes sometimes, so just two of these placed around the litter tray can keep it fresh for them and fresh for us as well. Great product. Oh, wow. So how does it work? absorbs the odour but also puts out quite a nice fragrance so it just keeps that whole area more pleasant for everyone. Well thanks Dr Mike. You're really welcome. Thanks Tiger. <laughs> You're so cute. <laughs>
drop the lead. Say bed one more time and bed? walk away. Walk away. Good girl. Bed. Excellent job, Jake. Thank you. Well done. Try George's tips for yourself. Remember that having rules for your dog is important and healthy. The bed exercise is a great way to teach self-control. Say bed, then take them there and wait until they settle down. Be persistent and calmly insist they stay there. Start with a few minutes and gradually increase the time. And only invite your dog off the bed when they're calm. Please visit sitdropstay.com.au for more information. Today we're going to learn a little bit more about wool. So let's catch up again with Tom Ashby at his merino farm in Mid-North SA. So here we are in the sheepyards guys, looking at some two year old rams. And these rams have fully matured. They're at their biggest stage in life. Okay. Now they've got about 10 months wool growth on them. And you can bury your hand in that. Yeah, I could lose a hand yeah. in here. <laughs> that's it. Oh, that's nice and soft. That's soft and warm, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And that's the unique thing about merinos. They have this beautiful soft fibre. And as you can see, this one here has wonderful crimp in his wool. When you, mm. when you look from the bottom of the skin right to the top. Oh. And right on top you can see the little black bits. That's the, that's the natural lanolin in the wool. Okay. So when, when the fleece is shorn and, and the wool gets washed, that natural grease comes out of the wool and then they make a byproduct called lanolin. Okay. And, and next year I'll keep that fleece yep. and I'll show that at the Adelaide show. Oh, cool. Yeah, as, as a fleece in the fleece competition. So this is one of the best fleeces? Yes, he's, he's one of the best fleeces. So why would he be one of the best fleeces? Well, because of the, the um, evenness of, the, of his staple from the bottom to the top of all the crimps. Okay. And he's very soft and very white. Mm. Yeah. Well, enough about all the boy sheep. Let's catch up with the girls, the ewes and lambs, and see what they've been up to. Tom told us that if we wanted to catch one of those cute little lambs, we'd have to sneak up behind it while it was feeding. Now apparently you've got to be pretty quick. Hmm, don't think Jake was quick enough there. Well, Olivia seemed to have the right idea. Alright, it's not as easy as it sounds. Those little lambs were pretty fast, but I wasn't about to give up. It did take me all afternoon, so the camera crew had stopped recording. But I did catch one. Oh, well done, Jake. Now I think Tom's got a couple of special little lambs we should meet. So what happened to these little lambs' mums? Well, these are orphan lambs. Um, this, this fella here, his mum um, died in the paddock and we found him curled up next to her. And this one here, we're not sure where his mum just left him behind. So he became an orphan and we picked him up in the paddock and brought him home and started bottle feeding him. And how old are they? Well, this bloke here is about, he was born about the end of April and this little one here was born middle of May. So, okay. only a few weeks old. And how often do they need to be bottle fed? We feed them four times a day, early in the morning and mid-morning and then again at lunchtime and then again in the evening. And that usually gives them enough to keep them through. Okay. And when they're really little, when they're, when they're real baby lambs, we have to feed them probably a bit more than that because they have lots of small feeds. And once they learn how to feed off the bottle, you can give them a little bit more in a bigger bottle. So how do you keep them warm? We keep them warm by putting them in a little pen um, like this with straw in the corner of the pen so they get into the straw at night to keep warm. And what age do you stop bottle feeding them? Um, they'll stay on the bottle for probably two months and then they'll go into a bit of solids like that little bit of loosened hay behind you and they'll learn to eat that. Okay. And then they'll go out in the paddock with the rest of the lambs when the rest of the lambs get weaned at about three months of age. For more information, go to merino.com. <laughs> Hey guys, I just got a new joke for you. Awesome. Oh, cool! Spill! So, what's a snake's favourite lesson? Snakes are ladders. Nope. Swiveling? No. History. <laughs> you get it? Yeah, oh, history. Yeah, yeah. Good one. Yeah, yeah, Good yeah. job. History, yeah. This week's rescue centre is Para Hills Vet Clinic. This little kitten was a stray kitten that was handed into the clinic. We try and rehome as many stray kittens as we can here. We take kittens that um, are not homed, that have been found or been abandoned by their mothers. We don't just take kittens that people have bred when they've been irresponsible and haven't had their cats desexed. This little kitten was found with two others, left in a box, abandoned by the side of a road. Um, we've managed to rehome the other two and this is the last one that we're going soon. 
We try and make sure they're healthy, we give them a full health check, we'll vaccinate them, deflea them, deworm them, microchip them and desex them. Once we've made sure the kitten's healthy, we try and find them a home. We can do that by either signage that we'll put out by the roads, we'll have them out in a little cage out the front for people to see them as they come in. We operate by Facebook and also our website to advertise that the kittens are here. We don't take a lot, so we just take the ones that we can find homes for. So this little fellow is still a little bit jumpy and jittery from its anaesthetic. Today he's been microchipped, vaccinated and tattooed. The tattoos in his ears are to identify him so that we know that he's been microchipped and desexed. If anybody was to ever find him, they'll immediately scan him for a microchip and return him to his owners. If there's one message that I could get through to everybody in Australia, it would be to desex and microchip your cats. This little kitten is one of the very lucky ones. He will find a home, but there are many more like him that don't. Make adoption your option. So if you do want a baby kitten or a cat, try and contact one of the local rescue societies or your local vet clinic for a kitten. So for your chance to win a year's supply of holistic slate pet food, go to allaboutanimals.tv and enter the competition. Viewer Pets is brought to you by Para Hills Vet Clinic. Yes, it's that time again, viewers pets. I get lots and lots of great photos of your pets emailed in and I love looking through them all. I've picked out a few to share with you, so let's take a look. Our first viewer pet has been sent in by Amanda from Adelaide, SA and her amazing cat, Batman. Batman is a charcoal coloured Bengal, which is a very rare colour in Australia. He's six months old, he's super sweet and an all-round clown. He loves to dive through small tunnels and chase after toys or anything that moves because Bengals are a very happy and active breed. Next we have photos from nine-year-old Victoria from Mount Anna, New South Wales and her teacup chihuahua called Shorty. Shorty loves to play hide and seek and when he's excited, he starts jumping like a kangaroo. When Victoria's brother is mowing the lawn, Shorty goes crazy and starts barking. <laughs> because he runs in the lounge and jumps everywhere, Victoria thinks he should be called Bouncer instead. <laughs> Our last, but certainly not least, veal pet has been sent in by 13-year-old Charlie from Brisbane, Queensland and her cockatiel, Misty. When Charlie first got Misty, they all thought she was a girl, but soon found out he was a boy. Misty is now six months old and is very smart and loves to sit on Charlie's shoulder. Charlie has also taught Misty to wolf whistle when anyone walks past. So to have your pet on our show, just email info at allaboutanimals.tv with three photos of you and your pet, five things about your pet, and your name, age, suburb, and state. And don't forget to enter our awesome competitions. Go to www.allaboutanimals.tv. Well, there are a few jobs for dogs out there. Some of you might remember Lassie, who had her own movies and TV show. So now meet Coco. He also got to be the star of a movie. Red Dog. Let's chat to Lukura, his trainer, to see what it took to turn Coco into a movie star dog. Coco actually has been an, an amazing dog, really, right from start. Um, normally, I allow a dog, for example, to settle in for a couple of days before I even sort of do much with him. But with Coco, I was actually able to take him out the neck the first day and start actually teaching him stuff. Look left. Stay. Good boy. Stay. Good. He started picking up a lot of the exercises as quick as any six, seven month old pup, which I find amazing. Crawl, crawl, good boy, crawl, stay down, stop, good boy. He has grasped up to up to about 30 different commands. This, this is an amazing script. This is absolutely fantastic. When I first read it, I thought, what an extraordinary dog. Now this dog had a way of communicating with people and it was absolutely extraordinary in his own way. You don't often get these types of projects with a dog starring uh, as, as Red Dog. To know that it's actually based on a true story of a dog that actually existed uh, is even more special. I think one of the things that's special about him is that he's learnt how to communicate you can see him sometimes just sitting there listening and actually works things out. And, uh, and to me, that's the type of dog that Red Dog was. You can see often just when you start to read the book, you start to re understand, here's a dog that actually really looked and glared and, and started to work things out with humans. All those tricks he had to learn. Wow, he really did pull it off. What a star. That's it for today's show. Thanks for joining us again. Now it's time for you to visit our website and enter some great competitions for your pet. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. So, see, see you next time. time.
lovers from around the globe are wrapping themselves into the record books. The Woolmart Company presents the world's longest social scar. Join us at raptinmerino.com.